Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Tell Me Why by Maddox. Well, that puts the bar high. Exciting? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Boy, we, wait till you see how dull I am. God. We really do have a special guest today. This guy right here, he is an award-winning director, producer, screenwriter, and he has made a name for himself in the Hollywood filmmaking industry. He has directed movies from Airplane to Basketball, the scary movies you probably already know, Scary Movie 3 and 4, and so many more. We are so honored, David, to have you here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Zucker. David Zucker. Yes, well, of what? course. Thank how, you. Like, are, how is this we done yet? What? <laughs> <laughs> I think this was very short for who this you are. This was short, yes. This was very short. Yeah. So are we trying? Yes, for but it's, it's, you know, everybody always says, it's nice to be here. I hate these cliches. <laughs> it's, it's an or, honor. Or, thank David. you for having me. <laughs> I, you you know, I, I could have been, I could have worked on my yard this afternoon. <laughs> I, why am I thanking you for having me? I don't know. Yeah. David, do you think 15 years ago I thought one day I'm going to sit here and have an honor of interviewing David Zucker? Yeah, I couldn't have predicted it. Yeah. I mean, did you think that a Persian woman will interview you? Persian lesbian woman? I didn't think that a Persian, Persian woman, yeah, would even speak to me. But, uh, but, you know, Ellie, who I live with, as you know, you know, sometimes she goes into Farsi and I say, will you stop? talking gibberish and, you know, talking. And <laughs> so then I started place? started saying it to people who I pass on the street who are speaking another ang language. I pass like, hey, speak English. You know? <laughs> so it was like, you kind of take a risk. You cannot take yeah. a risk. Yeah. We are very honored. We are really, yeah, really sure. honored to have you in this show. And there's a lot that we want to talk about. But Okay, let's, let's start then. Let's just start with yeah. one question that I have for you. What was the first fear you had today? The first? Fear. Fear that I had today? Any fear? Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah, I'd actually have to come here. Yeah. <laughs> what was but, the fear? Uh, yeah, like, oh my God, what have I, what have I gotten myself into? You know, why didn't I just say no? You know. So and then because here. you had a glass of wine last night, and then I had a glass of wine. Yes. That's what. That's how we, yeah, we treat we, people. Yeah. Can we say where we were? <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. What were we doing? We last were night? at uh, Rock and Pies. Yes. For the where? the premiere of the video for. There's this new band called Hot Crazy. They and are they're, hot crazy. They're, they're really great. <laughs> and uh, they, they, did, they do a song called Manly in Heels. So, Are you going to wear a heel? Uh, no. I have no <laughs> desire to wear heels or anything yeah. under than men's underwear. <laughs> Yeah. So that's the reason you, you yeah. decided to come here and give us this honor. So your fear was to come here. Yeah. So that's, is that the first question? That or, was the first you know, question. That was, you, you drew that from? No, that was oh, just, okay. no, that was just a question. Okay. <laughs> that was a we actually have no idea just, what's because in Because I'm curious to see if you no, have any fears. No, seriously, fear. I didn't have any, I don't have any fears. I mean, I just, I mean, not day to day, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, no day to day know, fear. I have, you know, the usual fear that everyone has that a meteor will come and strike and then, you know, we get, you know, then all life on earth ends. But, you know, other than that, I don't have any fear. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I really hope one day I reached the point that I said that they're, they're just very minor fear. Yeah. Because we live in a society that we all are, like, constantly getting injected with fear, right? Fear of not being We good are. Enough. You know, you actually bring out a good point. Because, you know, there's too much fear. I mean, yes. people just... And for what? So fearful of COVID and, you know, they have to wear Everything. a mask in an elevator. It's like... And meteorites. It's too... And, yeah, well, the meteorites, <laughs> yeah. I, I was trying to exaggerate there, but... Uh, evidently, you didn't get that. Now, you know, the, I'm, I'm offering remedial classes on Thursday nights oh, for I, all I, my I interviews. Have to attend them. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and no, I think there is too much fear. People, let's 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 kind of overcome. you know the worst fear is that every we have been having this interview for almost a month now. Mm -hmm. Most of our guest fears are that they think they are not good enough. Really? Yeah. It's like, I don't not, know. You know. My fear is that I'm not good enough. And, more and, I do, I think and the like truth is that you aren't. So, um, you, you know, and, yeah. <laughs> right. and, and so once you know that, you get over the fear. Yes. Okay. I love you, David. All right, let's dive let's in. Okay, let's, let's dive in. in. Right. Let's let's give me a real question. Yeah. Yeah. A timer. Question. We have oh, there's a timer. Ten minutes. We have 10 minutes. Right. Great. Okay. okay. Yeah. Why is there a wage gap that persists between men and women in Hollywood. Dun, 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 I, dun. Yeah, I, I don't know that there is a way. There's Do I need to be educated on this? I mean, are there, I, you tell us. Uh, is well, there a way, Jeff, that you, it, you think it exists? I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I haven't 
directed a movie in a while, but um, I, I, I think for a for uh, any crew position, for instance, I think the wages are the same. They can't pay a man. I don't, I'm not a curious. I, and I, but been heard. I think they they complain about uh, you know male stars uh, versus female stars. Well. You know, the, I, I, I was very fortunate to do a movie, uh, you know, uh, for a studio head who really knew what he was talking about mm -hmm. and I think was a genius. And mm -hmm. that's Michael Eisner of Paramount, who, mm -hmm. where uh, when every studio turned down the airplane script, this guy said, well, yeah, there's a movie here. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, Eisner always said, you know, about negotiations, you can get what you can get. And there's no blacklist. If there's, if if there's a male star who can get X amount, then you get X amount. I mean, somebody's willing to pay it. And for this movie I'm I'm casting right now, uh, it has to start with the male star mm -hmm. because the, the that's the lead part, and he runs through the whole movie, mm -hmm. and the, all the other parts are supporting roles, including mm -hmm. actually there are three great female roles that very unlike me because I, I usually write Weird you know it's you the, the part of the girl yeah, yeah. But yeah. seriously so you're saying that it depends the role. what I'm hearing is that if the role is for a man then the main role is a man then they get yeah, a high no pay, it's a situational see. thing and every situation is different if if it's a Meryl Streep movie then she gets the most I mean I don't think but but is there a I film where it's a man and woman it, who are equally it, lead characters then then their agents negotiate for them and it's mm. Michael Eisner again you can get what you can get so you're saying that negotiate how you're able to negotiate yeah, you negotiate better you get better like, be, be, yeah, better yeah. Reach. and but people can't complain all the time poor me or I'm that's being true. discriminated against you know it's just it's harder so as a woman I think one I have that difficulty as well maybe I don't know if it's being Persian it's just new to, to my career it's harder for me to ask for what I want <laughs> yeah well that's you have to uh, be able to do that yes. and usually if usually you have an agent and I mean I I have, have find the same thing hard to ask for what I want but I have an agent who mm. will negotiate these things for me do you think it's easier in Hollywood for men for male actors to negotiate easier than women no i just think it's michael eisner yes it's just, you, okay. you can get what you can get and whether you're like male that. or female it depends on who else they can get for the role who's just as good i mean for the movie i'm trying to cast now which is a you know a, kind of a comedy set in the film noir oh wow era, um it's 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 the part is for a guy and you know the studio the the production company who is financing it mm. requires a certain level mm. of star so and that's what we're dealing with there's no male female stuff here there's just we got to get a star and he will be able to command whatever he again whatever he can get yeah, and sense. he may know that uh whoever this is that if we don't get this guy we we don't have a movie so mm. that will be uh factored into the negotiation and the price makes sense so i agree it's yeah. just yeah. again harder for it's just that as a woman again my own experience we just need to learn how to ask for what we we want to get it's just right. have an or, agent who can do yes, that or, or else first. create your own roles that's that's another thing you you have to get the power by uh holding the cards you you if you control a script it's the only way Jerry and Jim and I were able to uh, direct Airplane mm -hmm. because we we controlled the script and we would not sell it unless we we could direct it. I remember Sylvester Stallone had the, he wrote the script to Rocky mm -hmm. and he would not sell wow. it unless he got the lead part. And they the studios Genius. the <laughs> studios yeah. being studios they tried to cast anybody wow. else of anybody course. else and. You know the uh, when Francis Coppola did The Godfather, you know they wanted the studio wanted to you know cast who you know whoever else mm -hmm. was a star, and it was horrifying. They didn't even want Brando, so and Coppola really stuck to his guns and really got the cast he wanted, and oh, wow. he he wanted Al Pacino, and you know the other thing is who was Al Pacino mm -hmm. at the time, right. and so. But fortunately, the studio gave in and let oh. Coppola cast it.
Here we word, go. David. <laughs> what are the chances we're going to get you here? Why didn't Rose make room for Jack <laughs> this is on know. the door in Titanic? <laughs> oh, they were floating on a door? <laughs> oh. You know, I, Titanic was a very successful movie. It was movie. very successful. And I think you have to suspend your disbelief for a, a part of it and, and go with the fact that, you know, I mean, it was a fictional love story and it had to be tragic and uh, and that's how they did it. And it worked, you know. It worked. Who's to say that, what's the director, James? James Cameron. James Cameron. James Cameron. You can't you say, yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing. I oh, think no. he does. He does. He you know, really does. He's, yeah. Have you seen Avatar? <laughs> I haven't actually, oh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I, that's what I have on my oh, on my Instagram. Or it's I have my heading is I still haven't seen. <laughs> okay, Friday. And, or I never watch seen. David, never you're seen watching Avatar. it on Friday. Avatar? Yeah. I don't think I want to see it. It's no? Just, it's fiction. I don't like fiction. He doesn't yeah. like fiction. Yeah. I don't like fiction. Why, yeah. does the, why did he have to die? So why the is reason Oh, well, now I'm really not going to see it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> not the the oh, storyline. Oh, in why Titanic is, or in Avatar? Avatar? We jumped and the Avatar. Avatar? Oh. Why did have the reason oh. we have this question is because, like, I watched this in Iran, right? Yeah. And I, I watched Titanic so many times, and every time I was hoping the ending will change. Like a kid, I was like, please, please change. I just thought I had some power that if I watch in the second round that something may change. I, I mean, the practical answer, I don't think there was room on that door for two people. There wasn't? I don't think so. I think it was just yeah. room for her. I mean... And I think that was part of the dramatic... It was big. They should have <laughs> made it smaller. <laughs> it looked yeah. big. I had hope as a child that there could be just some more room. Yeah, well, and yeah. When James got interviewed, he did say, he was like, well, on page 147, it says Jack dies. So I needed to come up with a way for yeah, how he Jack dies. Is. And that was it. He's like, this was the That's, artistic way. Oh, I, I didn't we, realize that. The yeah. script just said Jack, Jack dies. dies. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> and now this yeah. is how the movie I think I met James Cameron once. Well, I, did a, I did a video with the South Park guys mm. promoting Universal Studios. And, um, and he was one of the, the people that was, that was in it. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in Hollywood, and maybe if it's there, if it's not, I'm asking it yeah. right now. In Hollywood, what we are noticing is that most of the movies which get really good reward, best movie, best actor, mm -hmm. best directing, all are mainly are dramas, really yeah. dark movies, very, yeah. mm -hmm. like you don't get, even if it's an amazing scary movie or amazing uh, comedy, comedy yeah. they don't really get reward. Yeah, Why? I think that's perfectly fine. I mean, I, I think that, well, first of all, I, I like the Oscars. I think it's a good idea mm -hmm. because it, it promotes Hollywood and it promotes does, does promote mm -hmm. excellence mm -hmm. in movies. But it shouldn't be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, when people are, argue, well, this why didn't this win or why didn't so and so win for this? It's just it's kind of what Woody Allen said in Annie Hall, one of the great lines. He said, uh, "Awards, you know, greatest fascist dictator, Adolf Hitler. You know, mm -hmm. you give an award." <laughs> so, but but I think that. You know, they, um, it's really to promote serious movies, mm. and it should be. And uh, Annie Hall won for Best Picture, and it was a comedy. However, it uh, it really, it, in many ways, it was very serious. And mm. I, I still quote from that movie, uh, you know, when he says, uh, you know, re relationships are all crazy and don't make any sense, but you need the eggs, which is a reference to a joke that mm. he said earlier. About, he said, uh, a guy walks into a psychiatrist and says, uh, my brother uh, thinks he's a chicken. What should I do? And he said, <laughs> well, uh, you have to tell him that he's not a chicken and, you know, tell him, tell him. And the guy says, well, I would, but I need the eggs. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> And, and this is what, I mean, this was the message of that movie, which was more message than Airplane had or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever other movies. Why would were. you say that, though? So when we say more mass, or what do you mean by serious when you say that something serious needs yeah, to be? Yeah, they're serious movies. I mean, Annie Hall was a serious movie, which had a lot of comedy in it. And now Airplane had a basic point that said, you know, movies are bad. You know, movies mm -hmm. are, you know, mm -hmm. you wear the emperor's new clothes, the little kid saying, you know, that's. You know, that's not a co-pilot, that's Kareem Jabbar, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, um, and, and uh, but serious movies like 
the Godfather, mm-hmm. um, you know, those those should be considered for awards. It's like it's um, brilliant. Or here's another comedy that that should have probably won Best Picture. I mean, here I am saying this should have won or that. It's silly, okay. but this is an yeah, open uh, mic here. You yeah, are allowed right, yeah. to say whatever you uh, want. You know, yeah. the other comedy I loved was uh, Groundhog Day, oh, one of my with, favorite um, movies. Uh, Bill. Oh. Bill Murray. Murray, but yeah, Bill, yeah. And uh, such a wonderful, wonderful movie with a lot of deep meaning to it. Um, Tootsie was a great movie, but it's still, I get that it can't be, it, with a wonderful message, but it can't be considered in the same arena ballpark as The Godfather. Hmm. So, what is it about yeah. Godfather that you think? It- it's just simply the best two movies ever made, in my opinion. I just Tell us think more about it. Why? It's so, I mean, the, you know, the uh, references to, you know, things that happen in real life, you mm-hmm. know, like don't go outside the family and just so many lessons mm-hmm. from The Godfather. Um, and it's just, it's just so well done as a drama and acting and script construction. Mm-hmm. Um, it's brilliant, mm-hmm. and nothing has ever been done to to surpass that. Three, two, what do, how, what do you guys say? It's called action. Yeah. Action. 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 <laughs> action. Bye. Right. action. Where All were right. we? Okay, so um, what I'm wondering is that if we as humans think that the more the movies are darker, the better the quality is. Oh well, I I don't think that has anything to do with it. You can, you can you know you can get as much from Annie Hall as you can get from The Godfather, and mm. it doesn't have to be dark. Okay. Just because, but if you do a movie that's dark, I think it should have some kind of relevance mm-hmm. or message to it. Mm-hmm. Um, that that people, I think people want to learn. People go to movies and they want to see something new. They don't want to see just action with no. Purpose. Right, so and, it's learning. It's yeah. just it's constantly. That's why I don't really like superhero movies. I just I'm I'm tired of just a lot of action mm-hmm. and stuff. The right person. Mm-hmm. So David, who for you would you say was the most um, in terms of actresses, all the actresses you worked with on set? Oh, you know, or that, or that you know, um, one that no, the one that you have worked with on set, like someone that you had spent a lot of time with that really left a mark for you in terms of their work. Where you were at the camera and you saw her, yeah. and she created something that you, were, you weren't expecting. Was that's there a, a moment for you? Oh, well, that's a very good question. I, it's Anna Ferris, who was in really? uh, was the scary. two scary movies mm. that, I, that I directed. And she was such a pro. Um, she never, I, I directed everyone else. I really didn't, you know, I didn't tell her what to do. You wow. Know? Uh, you know, it's, I have to, do a lot to keep actors in the pocket and mm. do but Anna could just do it and Priscilla Presley was another one who just I mean she was Leslie Nielsen's fo- foil mm. and uh, she always wow. knew exactly how to do it mm. um, who, the other one the other one that I remember is Nancy Marchand who was in The Naked Gun as the mm. mayor mm-hmm. oh she's such a pro she knew how to play comedy and I don't mm. mean like trying to be funny but she stayed in character, stayed serious, and, uh, and I've had the, I've really had the privilege to work with some really great actresses, and of course, and actors too. Mm-hmm. Was there any actors that remained in character or offset after take was done that you could recall, mm. or anyone? No, no, they were all. I mean, they were all just people, yeah. human beings, and mm-hmm. when they're acting. They were they were professionals, mm-hmm. and so I've really I, I I've been so lucky. I didn't have one bad actor actress in the whole thing. Do you think we can? I could be an actress. No. So anyway, <laughs> so I wanted to say. <laughs> I love it. See, that's, that's, that's the exactly. I love it. It's just yes, transparent. transparent. I just, yeah. I don't waste that's my energy. energy. Right. Yeah. Ready to go to the next question? Sure, yes, go to the yeah, next question. Let's yeah. go to the next question. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay. Do you believe in reincarnation and why? Um, yeah, I, I do I do believe that there is, you know, an afterlife. You know, okay. whatever whether that means, you know, reincarnation or you know Do you practice Judaism? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, I attend a a Zoom service every Saturday morning. That's okay. that's where I was mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there's a, a a congregation called the Torah Minion, mm -hmm. and I look forward to this mm -hmm. every weekend. It's fascinating. He there's a guy who uh, does a summary of the Torah portion for the week, and he does it in a humorous manner that that you can understand. And then uh, <clears throat> Dennis Prager, who's a talk show host, does the, it's called the Devar. He gives a talk mm. on it. And there's very, wisdom is scarce mm. in Hollywood or anywhere else. And it's just, there's no wisdom in life. So this is, a, this is like an hour of, of wisdom that I, mm -hmm. that I can, and it's fascinating. So that's, that's what I do every Saturday morning. Why there is no wisdom in life? Or in Hollywood? Um, you know, uh, without uh, trying to sound, uh, you know, I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but people don't really believe in God anymore and, and the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And they don't have, a, and they're trying to separate religion from everything. And mm -hmm. religion has gotten a bad name. And but i think that uh those you know jews christians and muslims who believe in the ten commandments are on the right track and there's real wisdom in it mm -hmm. and that there's the ten commandments just if everybody if you want to defund the police just have everybody follow the ten commandments mm -hmm. and then we wouldn't need anything mm -hmm. but it's it, you know how society has kind of uh you know eroded the whole moral uh, standards because people don't find, I think people have lost their their moral compass what are so, some of these ten commandments you said what the word sorry ten commandments well, command. that's a good question I, I don't think I can name all of them well, there, just people yeah. no worries okay. it's not a quiz. well no yeah, see yeah. it's not like just curious. do not do not steal I Correct. mean just like mm -hmm. they're big do not murder mm -hmm. uh, do not commit adultery um, uh, well, what is adultery? Then, uh, uh, adultery is cheating. Cheating on your okay. cheating on your on someone your and betraying spouse. someone who yeah. And look at there's a simple one as like is one of them says honor your father and mother, and mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you have. To, it's interesting because it doesn't mean you have to love them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say you have to love them, but you have to honor them. Mm -hmm. I mean, except in the very few cases where. They're like abusive and, and horrible. Do you think that there is no wisdom because people don't believe in religion or God? Like, because, yeah. because the thing is that God and religion is a very, very big concept, right? Big topic. But what the Ten comment that comment, Commandments that you are yeah. saying right now, do not steal, do not mm -hmm. do adultery, those are things yeah. that anybody can respect regardless of what religion you are. Right, right? yeah. But, and that's what religion is, actually. Right. Is mm -hmm. But the thing is, I think where religion comes in is that if, if you don't believe that God was the one who authored the Ten Commandments, then it's kind of the moral underpinnings are weakened. Hmm. I mean, you can kind of sign on and say, yeah, I'll do these. But somehow it's, it's how to make people really obey these commandments hmm. is, and, and somehow, you know, ritual comes into a little bit. So you have hmm. to kind of believe that there is a God, mm -hmm. which, which I do believe. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Although it's, you know, I, I tend to, you know, I can't separate, you know, the old man with the, you know, the flowing robes and the, you know, <laughs> right, right. Just, I, well, why do I think this? But, you know, but, but, <laughs> but it's like, if, if there is no God, then, if, you know, all is permitted. Mm -hmm. Then if you, then why is it wrong to murder? It's mm -hmm. like, you can say, well. Well, because you are, yeah. we have this brain, which is very smart. David has this. Fabulous brain that can use yeah. without but, without God. Right, but with a God, I mean, I, I have to believe that uh, you know Hitler and Mother Teresa don't go to the same place. You know, there it's, has to be. It's a wishful hope. Well, <laughs> well, but I, well, that's where you have to have 
faith that's and you have to true. believe in something and I believe in justice that there's ultimate justice and that is so, true yes, it's, the, it's that definitely we don't I mean we yeah. want to hope that's the case so that yeah. we, we yeah. just uh, suffer less because if we think that we all do good stuff and Hitler goes to the he heaven and what if Hitler goes to heaven well I can't pos <laughs> I really have faith that he doesn't because, he doesn't, because yeah. if if that happens then it's it's just crazy. That's crazy. Then we're all on our own, and there's mm -hmm. no, you know, it's there's the no chicken justice. and egg situation, though. Yeah. Like the reason why Hitler became Hitler. Why do you think Hitler became Hitler? Um, you know, it was what I call O-rings. A lot of a lot of things had to kind of line up. There was the depression in Germany, and you know, the, a small group of people can influence. I mean, Margaret Mead said this, a small, don't underestimate the power mm -hmm. of a small Classic. group of people to affect change. I think she was talking about good things though, mm -hmm. but it can also happen with, with bad yeah. and evil people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so there are evil people. I teach my kids. There is, there is, there are bad people. We've all come across these people in, in our lives. And and you don't have to forgive them mm -hmm. unless they ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, I just hate them till the day I die. Mm -hmm. The people who have, you know, really, you know, dealt me mm -hmm. really unfair things. Mm -hmm. And I, all I can do is teach my kids, don't expect that everybody's going to be good. No. Yeah. And I mean, the reason I'm asking this question is because the reality is that we all come to this life like a kid, like Hitler right. was a kid, right? And yeah. uh, Charlie Chaplin was a child, and they, none of them came with preset of that. You will become Hitler. You will become Charlie Chaplin. Well, I don't believe that anything's preset. I just think you know they, things they, they go. Know. The path I mean, is developed. From... It's yeah. There's like a mutation or something. But uh, you know, I think Hitler became evil because of you know probably things that happened in his yeah. childhood and just things that kind of made him crazy i mean absolutely yeah and because he wasn't taught how to sit and think for himself right because that's what they don't teach right what happened is the meditation uh, it's just i don't know if you do meditation it's just you're sitting and you're not searching for outside you you're sitting inside and said okay let me see what is good what is bad because if we really tap into our human essence right. we are no longer animal right we have got we have we have come out of it we are well, really powerful. yeah we have to separate ourselves correct yeah. and if we sit and think like if hitler from childhood was taught to sit and just think like is this good or bad and instead of just getting punished by the society, getting rejected by the family and parents and kids and whatever that is around him, if he was just able to sit and think, just use the power, the brain that we have. But that's where the, the, the issue is, like in chicken and egg, that because we are not trained, we are from childhood, they're raising us wrong. They teach us mathematics, chemistry, physics, and yeah. how to learn. They don't mm -hmm. teach us how to think, how to use our brain. I, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that is the reason why we need outside of something outside of us to tell us what is good and bad. Right, and there's there should be certain rules. Correct. So, right. yeah. A rule which I really hope that all the religions would hand to hand, like Jewish, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and all of them hand to hand, instead of trying to say I'm the right religion, they would say that you know what, we are going to teach you from the moment that you come to this life that this Ten Commandments and you sit and think for yourself. If you wanted to give a message to David at the age of 30, <laughs> yeah. what would you say? Uh, you know, I would say, uh, you know, <laughs> watch out for bad people. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, that's been the, the, I mean, my life has gone great and everything, but... Um, You've been hurt. I, I've been hurt by bad people. And because you have a big heart. And, and you know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't mess with our David. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, so, I don't know. I, Do you yeah. feel the pain, David? Oh, I would, I, I would have said, you know, buy Apple. That's what I should have done, you know, mm -hmm. at, at age 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Buy Apple? Buy yeah. Apple stock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like my friend James Woods did, yeah. <laughs> I would say the NFT. Do you, have you heard of NFT? Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. it's kicking mm -hmm. off. Like I mean, you should start investing on that right now, David. <laughs> or maybe I could sell some. You know, yeah. like a picture of my first script. Yeah, oh, no, that's, that's what is the future totally. of Hollywood will be. Yeah. NFTs are scripts. Or oh, we should make an NFT out of David. Comedians yeah. will be selling their <laughs> NFTs. Right. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know who buys this stuff, but yeah. you know, I would yeah. buy. Oh, okay. it's oh, Gen okay. Z. No, it is. It's just uh, your heart is so big, David. Again, it's real, true honor, and <laughs> that you exist because you're really straightforward. You're really direct, and and when you say that, be watch for bad people. I can sense the pain in your heart. People who I mean, yeah. open your heart and right. then they just misuse it. Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, there's all there's you know there's big things that happen, but and small things bad but there's also been i've been really fortunate too i've had a lot of good mm -hmm. breaks and you know i came from just a great family great parents mm -hmm. and you're raised uh, in milwaukee right from in milwaukee mm -hmm. and it's great to come from milwaukee mm -hmm. i loved you know growing up in milwaukee going to the university of wisconsin and my kids are now there it's just a, it's just such a blessing having my my kids both in school mm -hmm. at the same place, Aww. and they look out for each other. It's just That's amazing. They're gorgeous. Yeah, so there's so much good in in, in my life. Yeah. There's so much good in life and so much darkness. One advice yeah. for Alex and I. Buy Apple. Buy <laughs> too late, David. I don't it's have the money. Oh, it's like it's yeah. Now it's like it's <laughs> seven hundred dollars a share yeah. or something. Uh, We're past that. I can't. You know, I think you have to, well, you know, what Ellie always says is you have to kind of imagine mm -hmm. what your future is going to be and, and, and just imagine that and, and keep doing that and, uh, and it, it will come true. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that at all, but you know. Was that, what yeah. was your experience when you, before, when you directed your first movie? Was it 1980? Uh, 1980 was okay. when we, mm -hmm. we directed our first movie. How well, did it just come all together? Well, that was, a, that's a long story. We, we did Kentucky Fried Movie first, mm -hmm. and then we rewrote, we wrote the airplane script before Kentucky Fried mm -hmm. Movie, rewrote it after Kentucky Fried Movie. It was still turned down. Only one guy, and as I mentioned, Michael Eisner, saw any potential uh, to it. And, um, and, and then, but, but by that time, we knew how to direct because we had been on the set of Kentucky Fried Movie with John Landis directing. Mm. And we learned from, from John how to direct. We didn't even oh. know. But so everything, we really wanted to sell Airplane and do Airplane first. But uh, we were so disappointed when we couldn't get it financed and mm. we had to do Kentucky Fried Movie. But that turned out to be the exact right thing that should have happened. So if there's any lesson is that even the so-called bad things that might happen, may be a good, a good thing. One more question. Yeah. What is the, what was the biggest challenge for you as a director in any film that you did? What was a time where you felt challenged behind the camera, whether it was in terms of the storyline or a uh, decision that was made? Is there well, it's always the, the biggest challenge is, you know, making the story work. And, but I, I'm pretty confident when I'm on the set, directing actors that I, I really do know what I'm doing. So right. I've never been frightened to go into the set uh, because I always knew I had great uh, material to work with. Okay. So, uh, you know, the biggest challenge is, you know, as John Landis always said, he told us, it's, you know, making movie, making the movie is fun. It's mm. just, it's raising the money that's so hard. Yes. So once you raise the money, then making the movie is actually fun. And uh, I mean, I, I would like to say easy compared to raising money. Yeah. How many years did it take you time to get to that point that you said, I know what I'm doing? Well, there's two things. You know, we, we, uh, it took us, you know, from 1971 when we started in the mm -hmm. business to 1980 that we, we really knew what we were doing. We knew how to direct then because we had... Even though we had never actually directed before, we we had we had John Landis as our model, mm -hmm. and then the next big leap was uh, directing by myself. That mm -hmm. was actually a harder oh, leap than directing Airplane for the first time mm -hmm. because I had I didn't have Jerry and Jim with me, mm -hmm. and it took me a while to get. That was a real challenge, and that was the last time I was nervous mm -hmm. going on a wow. set. And, and it was only, you know, maybe the first day, <laughs> but, right. but I had to do it all myself. And I, I didn't have anybody, uh, as we say, on the monitors. Um, so that, that was the big, that, that was probably the hardest thing I had, but it was only difficult in my imagination. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because, and then I gained confidence 
And, uh, you know, by the end of Naked Gun, Naked Gun two and a half, I just totally was, was into it. And, um, and the other thing was performing in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. uh, when we, uh, you know, I was in the Kentucky Fried Theater uh, live show troupe. And that was easy because it was, you know, we just walked on stage. I mean, the first, very first time I, I was nervous. But, and then it was when we show the movie, we do a Q and A. And I think that through the first couple of years, uh, I would kind of hang back and let Jerry mm. do the, Jerry was the, the upfront man. Oh, okay. And then lead. when I started doing it by myself, I was, uh, I, was the, the, I was the one. I didn't have Jerry or Jim mm -hmm. with me, and I learned to do that. Mm -hmm. It's like, so, so, you know, a lot of it just, I need to be thrown into the water, and, yeah. uh, and then I swim. That's how we're doing yeah. this show. That's we're just like, we're yeah. yeah. up here doing it. Yeah. One last word, anything you want to say? Um, buy Apple. <laughs> <laughs> how many times Everybody can I, to you go to, that, go to that well? No, I, I think I've said enough, uh, you know, yeah, I hope I haven't been overly serious. But, uh, <laughs> oh no, we love you. But people I mean, can absolutely. learn from me. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, yes. uh, but this has been delightful. Thank you, you very amazing. much. Yeah. You now, are your religion, and you we, we need more of you. Well, the yes. heart that you have, the just the, the, tr the transparency that you have. You just are like. Like in and out, like the book, just the open book. <laughs> no, I, I am, yeah. <laughs> like you're not that in and out. Yes, we're looking yeah. forward to this new and sitcom. I'm sure <laughs> everyone <laughs> has had enough of it. Yes. Yeah. yes, we love you. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. It's such an honor for having you oh, here. Oh, this is fun. Yes. Oh, Can yeah. I go home now? Yeah. No, we oh, just yeah, not yeah, yeah, we, right. we actually just this was a pre-interview. Uh, yeah. So the real stuff will be tonight. Yeah, the real stuff. Yeah. I'll come back. So. Yeah.